we're looking at 10 major differences between Protestants and the Eastern Orthodox Church. Theological differences, not music or dress code or traditions. We already looked at five. The Bible, authority, Mary, the saints, and icons. Let's look at five more. Number six, Filioque. Okay, this may not seem like a big deal, so I won't go into detail, but this was one of the main reasons why the Catholic Church and the Orthodox Church split in the 11th century. I believe as a Protestant that, that um, the Holy Spirit does proceed from both the Father and the Son, but the Orthodox makes the point that, that He only proceeds from the Father. Can you comment on that? We say that he, the Holy Spirit only proceeds from the Father because everything comes from the Father. But it's an important distinction that it comes from the Father because everything, including the story of creation, is begotten of the Father. Yes, he made a true statement. Everything starts with the Father. But he didn't explain why he couldn't also proceed from the Son. Now, I'm not going to get into a debate on this one since uh, you don't really care. But Protestants agree with Catholics on this one. Number seven, Eucharist. Another major part of worship. The Orthodox believe that the bread and wine transforms into the actual body and blood of Jesus, like literally. So because this is an encounter with the actual body of Christ, forgiveness of sins is obtained through the sacrament. Actual grace is transferred in the moment. So you see why this is super important to Catholics and Orthodox. Well, the Eucharist is the body and blood of Jesus Christ as much as you will see in the dialogue in the Gospel of John. Mm -hmm. Take, eat, this is my body. If you eat of my body, then I am in you. If you do not pay, take of my body, I am not in you. So the bread and wine is the symbol of the body and blood of Jesus Christ, just right. as articulated in Scripture. And we would believe exactly that, what you said. Mm -hmm. But do you find it offensive when most Protestants say it's, it's only a symbol, there is no transformation of mm -hmm. the elements? I don't, find it I don't find it offensive oftentimes, uh, whether it's a lack of understanding, mm -hmm. might I say, because ultimately it's the grace of the Holy Spirit in which does that act and transforms it into the body and blood of Christ. So you believe that the elements do transform into the body and the blood of Jesus? We do. Okay. Protestants say it's only a symbol. There's no transformation. There is no grace given at the ceremony. Only a recognition that grace was already obtained, a done deal long before the worship service. It's an act of worship. Do this in remembrance of me. Number eight, clergy. All Catholic and Orthodox clergy are male, but many Protestant denominations allow women to be clergy. Also, Protestants have this misconception that Orthodox priests are not married, but I think it's fair to say that probably 95% of us are married. Oh, wow. I had no idea. O only our hierarchs mm -hmm. What's have hierarchy? to... The hierarch is a bishop. Mm -hmm. uh, in the Catholic Church, you know, when you get up to Monsignor and you start getting into the cardinal status, I think one of the beautiful things about the Protestants is their pastors are married, as is the Orthodox Church. Um, oftentimes, that's a little bit of a holdback for some of the Catholics, that their clergy are not married and wrestled with whether it's permissible for women to become pastors, the Holy Spirit assured me that this was the path I was supposed to go. Number nine, purgatory. Okay, not technically a difference because I know the Orthodox don't believe in purgatory like the Catholics do, but mm -hmm. I've read somewhere that you guys do believe in some kind of intermediate state. There's a lot of different confusion and there's some writings in the monastic tradition that will talk about their various stages. The truth of the matter is there is no stage in the Gospel of Luke. He said to him, today you will be with me in paradise. Right. He didn't say after a half dozen stages or after purgatory or after uh, some other period of waiting. Number 10, the most important, it's the main reason why Martin Luther didn't just join the Orthodox Church. Number 10, salvation. Salvation is a process. Salvation isn't something that is just gifted or granted. Salvation is something on behalf of the Christian that's earned. Salvation is a process. Okay. It begins with baptism. That's why Paul says, work out your own salvation. He didn't mean work it out, meaning go and be charitable and give money here and do that and works. It means that it is a process. Okay. 
So it's a process, but it isn't this business of just kneeling here with some individual who catches you at a bus station. Just kneel here and do the sinner's prayer after me, and if you really mean it, now, I could make a lot of money on having a mean it meter where you put your hand in and mm -hmm. mean it, he doesn't mean it. If you really mean it, now you're saved. Okay, I get it. I'm against easy believism too. Just say this prayer and you're going to heaven. But salvation is by faith. It can't be earned. So just to be clear, I ask, how is it earned? So, it's what we do in our life. The do we give alms? Are we good stewards of our faith? Are, do we give and tithe and give back of our first fruits to the Lord? Are we concerned in our love for our neighbor? Do we show the love of God to all people created in His, in his image and likeness? Um, so salvation is something, is a process in which we can lose. Number one, by committing himself to Christ through the church, and I don't mean buildings or denominations, right. Through the body of Christ, where Jesus says, where two or three are gathered in my name, I'm in their midst. And it's an ongoing process. But that process is what we were talking about prior to the beginning of the interview, is what we understand as theosis, or becoming godlike. Protestants call this process sanctification, which comes after justification. Catholics, Protestants, Orthodox, we all say we're saved by grace alone. But Orthodox and Protestants define grace differently. For Protestants, the only part I play in grace is faith. As a, for by grace you have been saved through faith. I'm not going to mm -hmm. get into a theological debate mm -hmm. or discussion. I'm just asking, uh, what about those passages that talk about you are saved by faith, you are mm -hmm. saved by grace through Christ, not by works so that no man can boast. How do you mm -hmm. uh, interpret that in light of theosis? Um, obviously there's truth to it. We are saved by faith, but as there are in other areas of Scripture, you, uh, faith without works is dead. Mm -hmm. So there are various ways to include the entire scriptural canon in understanding our goal and our road toward Jesus Christ. For Orthodox, they believe in a theology of cooperation. We have a synergistic, meaning partnership with God, with the Lord. Uh, he operates, and we may cooperate. In cooperation, God gives you all the tools and opportunities for salvation, but it's up to you to walk it. God prepares for you the road to salvation, but it's up to you to walk it. Of course, God helps you and gives you the grace to walk it. So you're actually cooperating with God's work in you. For Protestants, that's a major difference. God not only prepares the road, He puts you on His back and carries you all the way up to salvation. Just accept it. You are His. Now all the good works you do is just the evidence that you are really His. For me, I believe that I can know that I'm going to heaven because of my faith and relationship with Christ. And my good works show the evidence of my yeah. faith. So I know that... Then again, I'm you can't objectify somebody. Um, you know, there are many good works. A lot of atheists do better works right. than... Uh, than so-called religious people. Mm -hmm. uh, the question is, if you're the judge, if you're the judge of your own But actions, the judge is not the judging of my good works, but the judging of my faith. Yeah, but it's he, the Lord, who's the ultimate judge. Right. Because all of us believe that we're doing faith-wise, relationship, we're doing well. For the Orthodox, you have to believe in Jesus Christ, and you have to walk the walk, all the way up. But if you stop walking, you're screwed. Because what if next week you decide that not you're not interested Jesus. in Jesus anymore, you found something else. Okay. Uh, a number of the early disciples and apostles left and followed something else. Uh, a lot of them went back to Judaism. So you're saying that we can be on the road to heaven, but the next week we might decide to get off that road. Okay. Certainly. Only one of the 12 disciples were present at the crucifixion. The other 11 scattered. Mm -hmm. So there's, very, there's a lot we do in our lives which can either keep us close to Christ or we can become antagonistic or atheistic. So if salvation is automatically assumed, mm -hmm. I guess my question has always been, 
then what is indeed our Christian journey? Because our Christian journey, according to Scripture, according to the lives of the disciples, was to assist and help people who were sick, demon-possessed, starving, homeless, and uh, disadvantaged. The sheep and the goats, so forth. I, I, I know you not. But Lord, I did this. I don't know you because you didn't do, you didn't follow my teachings. So, I, my goal is to be with God in Jesus Christ, whether you want to call that heaven or not. We call it theosis, to be union. Theosis means to be in union with God, which is heaven. But He is the ultimate judge. For me to say I'm going to heaven because I wear a cross or I'm in church, who am I to say where I'm going? But then, who knows? I leave it in the hands of God. It is not I who are going to say, you're an atheist, you're going to hell. Protestants quote Romans 10.9 that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that He raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. Take Jesus as your Lord. That is enough for salvation. But you believe that once you believe Jesus is the Lord, that's not enough, but you still must live a good life and earn your place in heaven, right? Am I wrong? No, there's a lot of accuracy to that. And that's why we're different. Thank you so much for your time. Well, thank you so much for thank your time. Thank you. Thank you. It was very Bless enlightening. You. I learned some things. I well, we all learn. We all learn from each other. Thank you so much for your time. I know you're a busy person. but uh, Pastor Jason, nice to meet you. you nice too. to meet you. And a pleasure. Thank you for coming by. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor, very much. Thank you. And thank you, too. See you next time.